Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is part two of removing the engine from the Fit Panda 1.3 multi jet and fixing it. Sort of. A bit. Uh, apologies first for those who have been seeing part one and then, like, well, where's part two? Part two's been in production for about three months, uh, but I've been struggling with the audio for this, so I thought I'd try something different. I was going to do this in the garage, but it's, it's still too cold, so here we are, inside the house. Uh, for those who were there for, for a pick recap, the EGR on this little 1.3 multi-jet uh, uh, was faulty. Tried to remove it off in situ, and I thought I'd do the manifold at the same time, broke the bolts in the back of the manifold because they just snapped because they're rusty and they were uh, seized inside the alloy head. So the only option was to remove it, uh, the engine in, uh, in the whole engine at the same time. I thought there were a lot of other bits and pieces as well, but I'll get to that in uh, possibly part three. Um, uh, but uh, we also had all sorts of different issues with this car afterwards, but that's because I'm incompetent. So, uh, Further ado, if anyone likes to subscribe to the channel, it should be there or there or the, the click bell sign should be down there somewhere. I'll do that later. Uh, and uh, without further ado, let's get on with this. So as you saw on the uh, first video about removing the video uh, the engine, um, came out pretty okay. Just I had to wait some time because this video, the original, the time lapse video, was done in March last year. It's been 12 months. Uh, and I've had a lot of other things on, so I've done a lot of other videos. Uh, and uh, this one I knew was going to be a biggie. So I thought I'd do this all in one go. So you've seen from the pictures here that the engine was removed and I pressure washed it after blocking off all the bits that I didn't want the water to get into. And uh, you saw that the uh, auxiliary belt was complete toast. I'm glad I removed it at the time. Um, so once it was back in the garage, it was basically just removing stuff from the, uh, the gearbox because I need to split the gearbox off the engine first. So we got the uh, the gearbox split, which is pretty easy. Um, remember the starter motor has got to come off. It's got a bolt going one way and a bolt coming from the gearbox side. The gearbox was absolutely rank. Um, and then I got the uh, it on the to the engine stand, which was take one of putting it on the engine stand as I had to remove it afterwards because there was a bracket on it which needed to be removed. I'll be reminded in a minute because I'll be seeing it on this uh, video because I'm watching it real time. So, oh yes, yeah, getting the head off. So I thought, well, if I won't get the head off. I'll just drill out the uh, errant bolts, but that didn't happen either. The uh, the bolts were well in, they were well seized in, and uh, drilling them out, I ended up starting to drill into the alloy head, at which point I just gave up, so I just purchased another head. 
the head that I got was from a Corsa. Uh, we also had the uh, 1.3 multi-jet engine, as they call it, the CDTI engine. It's the same head. It's just licensed uh, to Vauxhall or GM to make them. Uh, I sent this way to be skimmed. Uh, and the guy did an absolute sterling job. I also had to remove the glow plugs. Two glow plugs removed, no problem. The other two glow plugs were seized in, so they had to be drilled out, which caused problems a bit later on, but I'll get that later. So next was the removing all the stuff off the top. So I've, I've left up enough, loads of pictures in here. Uh, how I took off the fuel rail and the uh, oh, all sorts of little bits, little coolant pipes and stuff. Yeah, that's the fuel pump and the vac pump. Injectors just about to be pulled up uh, from the block, and uh, yeah, loads of photos. Yeah, I think what was it? Three and four were all right. Got me big pry bar on it. That came up in the end. I've since got a, a proper injector remover tool. Well worth it. I will just uh, dismantling the exhaust manifold and then see if I can get the turbo off. I was going to replace the braided uh, oil feed pipe as uh, that was pretty manky and they're not that expensive.
stuff really for the pudding mechanic. I'll just just take lots of reference pictures like this one here, which is all of the timing, uh, the auxiliary stuff, so the water pump, how to get to the water pump bolts, which is through the water pump pulley. Plenty of pictures, put stuff into boxes and label them. Pretty easy stuff, really. Oh, yes, yeah, getting the bottom pulley off. Oh, yeah, that was a joy. You've got a special timing tool. And time until special, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those part of the timing kit. Uh, it was about 30, 30 quid, something like that. Uh, and of course, the, the bolt is reverse thread, so you've got to go lefty. Lucy is no longer right, so you've got to go right to undo it. It's the opposite thread. Taking the timing case off, uh, I've replaced this uh, with a brand new part and along with the timing chain, uh, the gasket set, uh, all came as one from uh, uh, Lim Gaskets I think, I'll mention it a bit later on. Uh, I also found out I have to remove the sump to get the timing case off, which means I had to take it back off the engine stand. I mentioned before, uh, to get the flywheel off, to get the sump off, because without the sump off, you can't get the timing case off. And with this timing case, you've got the oil pump is inside the casing itself, um, as well as the oil pickup. That's all part of the timing case, but again, it's in the sump, and you need to get the sump off first. Uh, and it was glued on, it's a special sealant. And there it is. There was nothing wrong with the timing case, by the way, it was, it was fine. Although I didn't know how long the chain had been on it, whether it had been done before, and I think it had been done before. But uh, if you're going that far to remove the head, there's the... That timing kit I was talking about. This is why I'm now putting the um, I'm putting the locking pins in to the the head, so the head remains exactly uh, in the timing position. Discovered later that the timing position is the all the pistons all at the same level, all at the same time. In that kit, it did have the uh, the pin for the flywheel because there's a hole in the flywheel you can get to so you can actually time it while it's in the car. Uh, it did have the pin in there as well. Of course we're not because we've taken the engine out of the car. So, And this is me making the tool to take the top sprocket off. Uh, I will put in a picture of the dimensions of it. It's basically a bit of uh, steel bar I got from uh, uh, well, it doesn't really matter where you get it from. Uh, and some threaded bar and, yeah, make your own. It had a, a very famous British car manual. Um, suggests what to do, but uh, yeah, you, you pick it up really, uh, really easily. Once you, especially once you're there and you're actually doing it. So you've got to hold, this, hold the, the sprocket in place while you undo it. This is what I'm doing now. And like I said, I'll put the picture in with the dimensions. 
So once the sprocket's off, then you can start taking the uh, the cam cover off. off I'm looking at all the hydraulic lifters and I'm taking off the head bolts and as we're not reusing this head we're not reusing the cam followers either um, and there we are, you can see I've actually timed it up properly. There's all the, the, uh, the pistons are in the wrong, wrong, wrong level, so I discovered later on. And it was filthy, especially number one cylinder. That's where the EGR is. Number one cylinder, number four cylinder, number four cylinder. Uh, the one closest to the gearbox is where the EGR is. And there we are, we've got that one timed up, 14.17. And we've got the locking tool in there to uh, at the end of the, uh, the gearbox end. Uh, I've got these new head studs um, off a famous auction site, but they were pretty easy. They were, I think they were for the, the 1.3 um the Vauxhall engine the same thing uh, with this replacement head just put a new thread on all of the or clean the threads really on all of the uh, the studs So using a flat edge micro ruler, make sure that it's absolutely square on. Side. Made sure all the surfaces were absolutely clean and free of all of the sealant from the previous timing case. And then in that timing kit that I got, it had everything. It had it all there. There's a little oil feed pipe that goes there and the uh, a new sprocket, all sorts of stuff. Uh, everything you needed anyway. Making sure it's absolutely flat. 
square on. Just to hold it in place while you uh, you talk it up. Dead easy. <laughs> somebody who'd done this previously which was maybe think that the car the engine's been out of the car before um, got it as clean as I possibly could and oil is still coming out of the engine which is why I put the tray underneath Slot type SI5900. Because you can't put the sump on before you put the timing case on, as I said earlier on. So put a bead all the way around. And it's quite stiff sealant, if I remember rightly. And fit the new case. And it came with new bolts uh, as well, so uh, put new bolts in. And torque them up the way that the manual says. I think there were 16 of them. sealant on the uh, for the sump I didn't use a quarter of that sealant still used it in other things as well you can see there's a groove at the bottom of the uh, sump pan there is no gasket which is why you're using all the sealant now, this is where I discovered that the uh, that some of the bolts had threaded that there was <laughs> the only block hadn't got any um, any thread left in it 
So we persevered. manifold and then the turbo these are people who have seen other videos of mine I've done a turbo strip down rebuild on the uh, yellow panda that we've got fuel pump and there's only one way it go on um, and then the uh, uh, the vac pump and then the thermostat housing and there it is complete clamp that fits the uh, EGR pipe onto the back of the manifold uh, is an absolute pig to do but it does go on eventually and the mistake here that I made was that not to fit a blanking plate to the uh, EGR that I'll explain later
for this video. I lost a bit of the time lapse at the end, but it was just getting the gearbox back on. So, there were a few issues outstanding, which, in hindsight, I'd wish I'd done while the engine was out. 1. The EGR is essential for the engine management system to work, but when it is working normally, it's awful. Fit a restrictor plate when fitting the EGR. 2. The starter motor has always been slow to turn over the engine. This should have been a warning to me to replace it. The solenoid had a really bad earth and although I could have fixed it, uh, I didn't prior to putting the engine back together and that caused a whole host of head scratching post rebuild. Cheaper in time and effort just to replace it. 3. I should have replaced the clutch and release bearing. I knew it was worn but I thought to myself, ah oh, it'll be okay. Wrong. The car has now become horrid to drive as changing gear is challenging. Lots of double D clutch. Reminds me of my youth driving in the early 90s. As I will explain in part 3, all of the other stuff I did to keep this Fiat running. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. It's the longest I've done to date. Please let me know in the comments if you like to more of this style, more or less time lapse. Please like and subscribe. There will always be more videos coming soon.